So we often get asked about the difference between identity access management and privilege access management, uh, particularly in the context of sort of managing credentials and secrets. Um, you know, I think when we talk about privilege access management, it's a market that's been around for a while, and what it really focuses on is the people side of it, right? It's like you have a, a database operator or a developer or you know, a system administrator that either needs to SSH into a box or log into a database and do some maintenance or you know, you know, do some sort of activity on the infrastructure. They need credentials. And so I think what privilege access management has forever focused on is, well, I don't want to give all my DBAs root credentials to the database, right? So what I'm going to do is say, OK, great, Mitchell, you can log in with your Active Directory credential, right? So we'll validate you're a valid DBA who still works for the company. Great, you can log into the PAM system and check out the database credential, and then you'll go connect to the database. And so what you're really doing is saying, I'm going to verify the sort of person who's working for the company still works for the company, their credentials are valid, and if so, they can use that to get a credential to target SSH access or database or whatever they need, right? And I think very much, you know, when we talk about the language of PAM, it's people, right? We're talking about people doing things, right? When we talk about identity and access management, right, the classic, you know, Amazon IAM, for example, you're talking about machines, you're talking about applications, right? I'm going to launch my Lambda container, and the Lambda container needs read and write access from S3, right? So the identity is that sort of Lambda function or the container that we're launching, and the access that it needs is to some other service, right? It needs to read and write from S3 or spin up an instance on EC2. So the difference is when we talk about IAM, we're always talking about machines and apps and services, right? And so this becomes the kind of the key distinction is where with Pam, what we said is, I'm going to use your human identity verified against some single sign-on, right, to say, do you work here? Are you allowed to access the database? Versus with IAM, it's very much focused on machine identity. And the challenge there is, you know, people, we have a more natural understanding of what intrinsic identity means, right? Like, you know, you have a name and you're autonomous, where an app is sort of a weirder concept, right? You have to sort of go out of your way to assign an identity to a Lambda function, assign an identity to a random binary running somewhere and say, okay, I'm going to make the distinction that this random binary is a web server and this random binary is an API server and this thing is a database, and that those identities mean something. They have access to different levels of credentials, right? So I think that is at the crux of identity and access management is I'm going to assign identity to machines, applications, services, tie that back into a set of capabilities they have in terms of what are you allowed to access, and then use that to say, great, my Lambda function boots, it can request an S3 credential that lets it read and write from S3, we're off to the race. So in that sense, they're both managing credentials, right, in some sense, but two very different audiences, one for people, one for machines, and as a result, you see very different scales, right? One might do 100 requests a minute, the other might do 10,000 requests per second, right? One needs to be deployed one place in the world, right? The other one, you might need multi-region, multi-data center, global deployment because you have applications running all over the place. So I think you end up with a different requirement of access, right? One's point and click in a UI, one's API driven, one's low scale, one's very high scale, one's people oriented, one's machine oriented. So I think at a 10,000 foot view, you can look at it and say, well, they're both about managing credentials. But I think once you zoom in at a 10,000, 5,000 foot view, there are a bunch of nuances in terms of access patterns and scale and the operational deployment. And so I think that becomes the kind of key distinguishing pieces between PAM, uh, which is a bit more traditionally people, and IAM, which is more sort of machine and app oriented. And I think a challenge with, with PAM versus IAM is that IAM, the surface area is huge compared to the standards that exist for PAM. And so with PAM, I mean, it, it's pretty common from the people side that people side that you'll have Active Directory or some, there, there's only a handful of standards that really are widespread there to verify a person is a person. Uh, but on the IAM side, especially with the adoption of cloud and SaaS and all these different things, it's, it's an order or two magnitude of larger surface area of how you prove identity. Um, uh, not, not only how you prove it, how you give it and all that sort of stuff. And so, um, yeah, the 10,000 foot view, view, you could squint and it looks the same. Uh, but the, the features you want are very different too. You want session recording with PAM, which you don't really need for a machine in the same way. Yeah. yeah, no, I think the ecosystem integration is a huge point, which for PAM, it's largely, there is no real ecosystem. It's Active Directory, you check out the credential, you go log in. Where mm -hmm. with a system like I am, it's all, it lives and dies by integration. It's, mm -hmm. You do integrate with all the different platforms that need to connect and all the different systems you need to govern access to. So yeah, that's a huge difference as well.